In this video, we're going to be doing some setup work for our forms. So what we'll do is we'll set up a couple links so we could click back and forth between our login form, our register form, things like that. So we'll be basically doing just setup work in this video. So what we'll do is we'll create a shared module and uh, we'll actually create a folder for that. And this shared module is going to be for sharing stuff through our entire application. And we'll get into that pretty soon. So we'll create a module. Then we'll go create a couple components. One component is going to be our column component, and that's going to be inside of a layouts folder. So whenever we have a layout for our application, we'll put that component inside of the layouts folder. And we're going to have two layouts for now. Uh, in this video, we'll create one. The, the one is going to be a one column layout, and that's going to have our header component inside there. And we'll create a component for our header. And then we'll just throw a couple links in it. It won't be pretty or nothing, but it'll get us um, to a point where we can just navigate between all our pages, uh, like our forms easily. So down in the description, you'll find these links. These links are going to be the pages that I'm going to be referencing throughout the video. And let's go and actually check out this first one. This first one we checked out in a prior video, and this shows you how to generate different things. So in this video, we're going to be generating a module and that is right here and then we'll be checking out these different options later uh, for now we'll keep it real simple we'll just use the basic ng and i'm going to use the g uh, this time so ng g module the name of the module the name of the module is going to be layouts and then we'll also create two components and that's right here the first component is going to be for the header or actually the layout and i'll call that like column one and the second component is going to be for the header Let's start off with a module. Let's generate a brand new module. Let's go and create our shared module inside of our app folder. So open up the command line and then ng and g for uh, generate for short. And then we're creating a module and the name of the module is gonna be called shared. This should create a shared module within a shared folder. And there it is right here. So now that we have a shared module, let's pull it into our main app module. Now you could pull this into multiple different other modules as well, but for now we'll just put it inside of our main app not module, we'll pull it in. And if we open this up, our new module, and just copy the name of it, go back to your main app module and just paste it within the imports. So uh, just, I'll put it right there and make sure you import it. And we're pulling it in right here. Okay, so now our main app module knows about this. And this is going to be important for later on because we're going to be uh, editing something in our main app uh, HTML here. So now that that is done, save this. Now let's go and set up our components. The first component I want to set up is our layouts component. And these are going to be for uh, different layouts within our application. We're only going to be creating one layout for now. So within our shared module, we'll create another folder called layouts and we'll create a, co uh, a component inside there. So again, we'll do that in the command line. So this one's gonna be NGG and in this case, we're generating a component. Now I want this component within a shared, within the shared folder and within another folder called layouts. Now, as you can see, there's no folder in here called layouts. So it's gonna generate this automatically if we, we just do it like this, shared layouts like that. So it's going to generate as a folder called layouts because it's not in there. And then the name of the component is going to be column one. I'm thinking of calling it. So column one. Okay. So if we go inside here, there's a layouts folder. And then here is our new uh, component right here. Now, again, we need to go and tell our main module about this. So let's go into our shared module. And then inside of here, uh, if we look, actually Angular was nice enough to pull this in for us. So it's being imported right here. And also it's being uh, pulled in here. And that's exactly what we want. And then let's go ahead and export this. So what we want to do is tell whoever's using this module that you could have access to this component. And to do that, there's a, an array called exports. So uh, let's create this. Then just copy this and paste it in there and save it. So now we're telling whoever's using this module that you can get access to this component. And then now that that is done, we need to create one more component. This component is gonna be within a folder called components. Now this components folder is where we're gonna store our header components, our nav components, our sidebar components, our footer component, 
our 404 components, any component that has to be used throughout the entire application, we'll store it within here. So let's go ahead and generate that a while. So ng g, and then it's going to be a component again. And then um, that this is going to be inside the shared folder, inside of a new folder that we're creating. It's called it's going to be called components. And then the name of it, uh, in this case, it's going to be header. We're going to be creating more down the road, but for now, we'll, we'll only create one. So we go inside of our shared folder again, and here is a brand new folder called components, and there is our brand new header component. Now, if we go and we check this out, our new component here, here is what's called a selector. This is how we're going to tell other components that uh, to use this. So we could actually copy this. Let's configure our layouts um, column right now, our component. So we open this up. Inside of here, I'm going to say, hey, whenever somebody calls you, pull in the header component. So let's go and just, uh, there we go, save this. So now whoever's calling this is going to be uh, pulling in the header. Now this is going to get changed a lot down the road. We're going to be setting up like the footer and a whole bunch of HTML in here and really configuring it, add in CSS. But for now, just to get us started, just to get us set up, uh, we'll just do it this way. And then also you want to make sure that this new header component that we just created, make sure it's being pulled in right here. So uh, Angular, again, is smart enough and nice enough to import that in for us and it's being pulled in there. We don't need to export it in this case. We only need to export the column one component because the column one component is going to be using the header component and that's it. Now there's one more thing we need to do is we need to go and use this column now somewhere. And where are we going to use that? Right here. And I'm just going to pull this in. If we go back here again, this is a lot of jumping around, I know. And then go right here. Here is the selector again. And I want to use this selector within our main HTML. Now again, we're going to be changing this up a lot. We're going to be moving uh, this app router out to one of the components here or the columns. So, But for now, just to get us started again, we'll just uh, bring it in here at the top. And there it is. It knows about it because we're pulling it into our app module. And that's all you need to do. Let's run this real quick and make sure everything's working before we actually start building out our nav bar. So if you uh, open up the command line, let's clear this out. Then ng serve. And let's check it out in the browser. So here in the browser, if you're seeing this at the top of the screen, it means you're in good shape. Now, if you're not seeing that, you just want to right click, inspect, and then check out the console. You might be getting an error here, like it might not recognize a component or something like that. And I got in the habit of just keeping this console open every time I'm working with Angular because what happened to me in the past is I, I ran into errors and then it will be working fine in the browser, but down here you're getting all these different errors and you're not seeing them. Then when you finally do get an error where your application stops working, you come down here and you end up tracking the wrong errors. So I learned the hard way just to keep this open. And then when you're testing, uh, you just want to make sure you keep an eye out for those errors. Then right here, we're getting an error. The reason is I got the server off right now. So it's it's not able to see this API. So that's fine. Uh, that's no big deal. But uh, if you're not seeing this right here, just go back to here. Make sure that uh, you follow all these steps again because this is pretty hard for somebody that's new. Like you got to make sure your shared module is being pulled into your app module. Then inside the shared module, you got to make sure your, all your components are being pulled in. And also, this is very important. Make sure you're exporting the column. You know, make sure um, your your HTML can see this component, you know. So there's a lot of configuration here. Just go back and follow those steps again, and you should be all right. Now, if you're at this point where you can see this at the top up here, now we're ready to start actually building out our nav bar. And uh, we'll just copy and paste out of Bootstrap. So if we go to Bootstrap, the main page here, go to Documentation, and then go to Components. And then down here on the side in the nav bar. And I actually seen a nav bar earlier. Uh, it's real basic for now. And it's this right here. This is perfect. So we'll have like a login button, a register button, 
and a change password button just to get us started. Copy this. And if we go back here and close this down, let's open up our components inside the header, open up the HTML and then close this down and I'll paste this. And you might recognize a real weird format here. I personally like to do it this way. I think it's easier to read because with some of these elements, you might have like tons of attributes and it's really hard to read if it's going all the way across the screen. And also if you're ever working within a team environment and another team member is working on the same line on these attributes, you run into a lot of conflicts that way. So I learned to format it this way and you, you have less conflicts with other team members. And also it's easier to read all these different attributes, you know, and if you want to change it to this format that I'm doing it here, just go to settings here and then go to settings. And then in here in the text editor, you could change around your formatting and all kinds of things like that. But if we go back here and let's just save this, make sure everything's still working. If we go back to uh, the, the browser and there is our brand new uh, nav bar. Now let's change over all the text. So if we go back here, this is going to be clock it hub. That's the name of the site hub let's go out and get the icon we're not going to get into too much styling it but um i found this really cool icon uh right here and it's got a user and it's it's got this um this time clock next to them and that's perfect when i saw that i was like oh now let's go back here and we will just paste that right here that's perfect for now save that now uh let's go and change over the text down here i'll get rid of this we only need three links for now. One's going to be the register. Register, the other one's going to be login. And the third one's going to be our change password form. And we'll be creating all these forms in the next video, actually. And actually get rid of this last one here. And this one will be change password. Password. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this video. Let's save this. Just make sure it's, everything's still working. Open up the uh, browser again, go back here, and it's all working. We're not getting any uh, errors, so that's good. So now that this is done, in the next video, we're going to start building out our auth module, and we'll start building out all our forms uh, for our register, login, and change password, and we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you then.